Dear students, today we're going to talk about language and the brain, the relationship between language and the brain, the link in the, between language and brain, our brain. Remember our uh, famous saying? The brain is free. But uh, why don't we use it? Right? Okay, now we said while producing language we use our brain. But in which part of brain do we produce our language? Where is this production takes place? We're going to investigate this. We're going to analyze the relationship between comprehending and producing language and brain activity. Is it alright? Yeah, I can say. Shouldn't it have been done earlier? Being the one that is born, did you see it? 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 Did you şu şekilde yorumlarız, biz ne anlıyoruz? Hep bundan bahsettik. Yani tamam, dili biz üretiyoruz. Beynimiz dilin üretiminde büyük bir rol oynuyor. Peki bu üretim beyinde nasıl gerçekleşiyor? Okay, you take the skull. <gülüyor> you open it. And you see the brain. It's a little bit thick, muddy um, piece of uh, meat. Right? You see it. White meat. And everything is stored in that part. All our memories, knowledge, whatever we have is stored in that part. It's like, you know, a hard disk. We've got a hard disk. Portable hard disk. Imagine a portable hard disk. Or, imagine this is your brain. Okay? There are a lot of information now inside this piece of gadget. And how does it work? I open it, click on this power button, and then enter my password or fingerprint, and then it works. Mm -hmm. And then you search, you look for the information you've got. You know how it works. But what about our brain? What about our brain? How we produce, okay, how our brain works while we produce the language, while we generate the utterance. Now I'm speaking, you see? I produce some sounds and I combine some constituent components together. I form expressions, sentences, phrases, words. I produce this. And my brain is involved in this production. How does it how does it involve in this production? We're going to look at the relationship between producing language and the way brain is involved in this production. Is it clear? Okay, so previously we reviewed various features of language that people use to produce and understand linguistic messages, right? So features of language. However, as we asked earlier, now where is the ability to use language located in our brain? Where is it? Can we see it? Can we identify it? Can we describe it? We're going to look at this location. But of course, to analyze the relationship between language and brain, we use neurolinguistics. And neurolinguistics deals with the relationship between brain and language. Dil ile beyin arasındaki ilişkiyi açıklayan bilim dalına ne diyoruz? 
Pure linguistics. Okay? The subtle relationship between language and the brain is called neural linguistics. A construction now. Before, of course, going into our topic, you see there is a story in your book. Now, the story is about a, a, a man who works in a construction area and endured by a road going through his upper cheek, left upper cheek, and out of his forehead. All right. Now, a construction crew blasts away rocks to lay a new stretch of railway line. Some gunpowder accidentally exploded and sent a three and a half foot long tamping road up through his upper left cheek and out from the top of his forehead. Can you imagine? Upper left cheek and then come somewhere here, out of here. The road landed about 50 yards away. Okay, it goes through the upper cheek, comes out of the forehead, and flies away and lands about 50 yards away. This guy is called Mr. Gage, suffered the type of injury from which it was assumed no one could recover. Nobody thought he would survive. But he survived, he did. However, a month later he was up and about with no apparent damage to his senses or it, his speech. So after, after a month, they see that there is no problem with his speech and with his senses. He still can produce language and he still can use his senses. The medical evidence was clear. A huge metal road had gone through the front part of Mr. Gadget's brain, but his language abilities were unaffected. He was a medical murderer. Even though the front part of his brain was damaged, still his speaking abilities weren't affected. So what does this show. So, the point is here, while language may be located in the brain, it is clearly not situated right in the front. Okay? From this story, we come up with this conclusion. The part of our brain which is involved in production and comprehension language is not located somewhere. Why? Because the case of that guy who was injured um, by a road that went through his forehead shows that the brain, sorry, the um, speech form action is not located in the front part. Otherwise, he wouldn't be able to speak when his uh, front part of his brain was damaged. Yani anlaşılıyor ki demek ki dil üretimiyle ilgili olan beyin bölümü ön tarafta değil. Çünkü az evvelki hikayede olduğu gibi ön taraf zarar görmesine rağmen bir ay sonra adam ne yapabiliyor? Konuşabiliyor. Ve duyularını kullanabiliyor. Demek ki beynin e, konuşma ile ilgili bölümü ön bölüm değil. So where is it? Where is it located? Are you curious, curious now? So now there are some areas in the brain we call them left hemisphere and right hemisphere. Now you open the skull and you see two parts. Left hemisphere and right hemisphere. Now I'm going to show you. 